According to late Chief Obafemi Awolowo, a Nigerian nationalist and statesman who played a key role in Nigeria's independence movement, our government have been a matter of few holding the cow for the strongest and most canny to make. Under those circumstances, everybody runs over everybody to make good at the expense of others. Upon assuming office in 2014 as President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari promised to nip corruption in the board, knowing full well the damage it has caused to the growth of the nation and how Nigeria is seen and perceived by the international community. Describing Nigeria in times of the level of corruption, United Kingdom's Prime Minister David Cameron said Nigeria is fantastically corrupt. Nigerians, they've actually got some leaders of some fantastically corrupt countries coming to Britain. No, Nigeria and Afghanistan are possibly the two most corrupt countries this. President Muhammadu Buhari did not leave any stone unturned upon his assumption to office. Some of those alleged to have fared far from the country's commonwealth were apprehended. Nigerians' former security advisor, Sambu Dasuki, former governor of Sokoto State, Atahiru Badarawa, and owner of a legal state-based private television station, Draymond Dokbesi, were detained separately by Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Also, former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Uli Semetu, was not spared as he was prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for 400 million naira he allegedly received from the Office of the National Security Advisor in 2014. The anti-graft crusade of President Muhammad Buhari scored a major goal in March 2018 when James Bala Ingulari, a former governor of Adamawa State, was investigated, found guilty, and sentenced for five years by a federal high court. To some of these Nigerians, President Buhari deserves a pat on the back. They try very well for the corruption. But there are some people with are rooters that he copped the Samba. Uh, so he's trying his best, but I want Nigeria to give him more opportunity. We started by what are militating. But if you want to look at the whole thing holistically, he has gotten a pass mark. The president's shadow is even fighting the corruption. Everybody is afraid. More so, some former governors, Sulin Lamido, Gibre Suswan, Babangida Aliyu, and the late former chief of defense staff, Alex Badi, also felt the heat of the anti graft war. Senate President Bokola Saraki, however, skated through his trial at the Court of Conduct Tribunal for lack of proof by the federal government over allegation that he forcefully declared his asset. In spite of the vigorous efforts of the administration into fighting corruption, the integrity and sincerity of the president is still being questioned. We have heard that NNPC is operating independent accounts. They are not in TSA. So why? And what are this money meant for? But you will believe me that most of these monies are slush fund, so that the government can easily dip its hand into them for some services or campaign or political activities. So President Buhari must come clean. If you want to fight corruption, let him fight it to the core. Let him remove sentiment and racism. We want this corruption to be fight, speed up the try, jail these people, recover the Nigeria money, and give a press conference how you recover this money and what, where the money has been put to. You don't tell us you recover money every time in the front of newspaper. Among those indicted in the president's cabinet were Okoy Obonobla, special assistant investigation panel for the recovery of public properties for forgery. Former minister of finance was accused of dodging her compulsory national service and allegedly forged the National Youth Service Corps certificate. Attention was also drawn to the Babachi Lawal, Minor Gate, and the chief of staff, Abakari Saga. Look at the case of the former uh, secretary to the government of the Federation, engineer David Babachi Lawal, who was a... Uh, 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 relief of his position and after then nothing has happened close to two years now or two years nothing has happened in fact he's been seen in national villa to attend you know state power state functions and the rest when you want to be a president for all you must sweep your house tolerate you now you're accommodating those who are corrupt with your assistant and you are fighting those who are against you that are corrupt so you are not laying a good foundation in terms of corruption fighting. While commending President Muhammadu Buhari for his doggedness in the fight against corruption, institutions saddled with such responsibilities were also advised to play their roles. Uh, it started well by fighting it, but other agencies that are supposed to work in collaborations with the federal government, they are not working as appropriate. 
take for instance judiciary. Uh, Buhari has been uh, a dictatorship before, but is now is under democratic system of government. There are a lot of things that he can do as a military person that he cannot do as a president who is elected democratically. Every day they keep on joining case, cases of corruption. I don't know if the, if the judges and the lawyers, they are benefiting from the corrupt people. Addressing world leaders at the first edition of the Paris Peace Forum in France on November 11, 2018, President Buhari called for a harder crackdown on perpetrators of illicit financial flows to discourage more public officials from mismanaging their nation's resources to the detriment of the poor and vulnerable people. While applauding President Buhari's led government on the achievements recorded so far in its fight against corruption, some Nigerians are of the opinion that until the president begins to crack down on alleged corrupt individuals within his government, the fight against corruption may not be a total victory for the administration. In Abuja, Kadwina Mundi, Liberty News.